these coaches. Uh, we're a family business. We've been on the go now for 73 years, since 1947. It's currently run by my father Gordon, and myself, Kevin, and my brother David. Uh, as you can see, we've got quite a good ball here. Uh, going back in history and time. That's my great-grandfather. Uh, that's my uncle Charlie. And somewhere, somewhere we've got uh, my granddad up here as well. Uh, so we've got a huge his history of uh, coaching and being involved in the coaching industry. It is something uh, that we're quite passionate about and we spend a lot of time and effort and years building up a business to of now currently about 60 members of staff. It goes up to 80 peak season. Uh, so we get everything from admin team in the office through to workshop staff and drivers and compliance staff. So we have a huge team of people that uh, rely heavily on the coach industry. And again, we've got the outside parts as well, where we've got places we go to that uh, relies heavily in, in the coach industry. In our training room, we spend uh, quite a long time here, up to 15 drivers at a time come in for uh, doing compulsory training. We spend a lot of time uh, making sure they are the ambassadors of our organisation. Currently our drivers are all waiting for uh, a job to come in and fingers crossed be able to rescue the season for them. Uh, they, they absolutely love the job that they do and co coaching is part of life, it's part of the family. You know, a big family, as you can see, in the coaching industry. We've got my dad here driving one of the Mercedes coaches that was at Ballon Dollar Castle. But it just shows that as a family company, we do everything from not, not only driving the vehicles and looking after the operational side to making sure they're all safe for the road as well. A lot of small vehicles are quite imperative to the whisky industry and we bring guests from throughout the world to Speyside to sample some of the delights that the whisky industry has. Currently all these vehicles are waiting for a job to come in uh, but some of the vehicles like this one here and one we have over there is uh, currently on 24 hour standby for the NHS. We have 42 coaches uh, of all different sizes from 9 seaters up to 74 seaters and lots of the coaches here are predominantly touring around the highlands and islands and around Europe but at this at this time they're all sitting waiting for the pandemic to end and allow us to get back to what we do and do well. Some of the coaches can be con co converted into a big van if if it was needed that we could we could take the seats out and and use the coach as a bare shell we could move logistically things around uh, that needed to be used at a time like like this. Uh, so we have that flexibility as well but currently all the coaches are sitting there on average each coach probably has a standing cost of about £250 per day Coaches like this are not just our company it's every company across the UK, Europe and the world that's exactly the same scenario as what we have here uh, so we're, we're not alone but we have a lot of uh, coach companies that are in the same position and, and trying to get a voice. All these coaches are sitting here waiting. Uh, it will start again, but we need to make sure that as as an industry, as a tour industry, we need to make sure that we have, have made the season that little bit longer. So try and get things in November and December, promote Scotland well, make folk come and see our wonderful scenery. Together as one industry, we we need to have a big voice to get support and drive the industry forward because there's companies closing quite a lot, quite a lot of folk are closing. Uh, but as a family company, we've got an ability to help the uh, emergency services, the NHS, the local community. We've already been uh, called out to help with moving prescriptions for uh, vulnerable people that are across the northeast here. 
Uh, it's something that we, we are able to do, we've got drivers willing to help if that needs to be done. Uh, so by working with the Brazilians hub through in Aberdeen, we have uh, been able to help many people across the north. And again, I've been in contact with the local attractions to see if they are able and willing to help at the time of the end of the pandemic to possibly use our coaches to drive fa families and members of the of the em em emergency services and NHS to dif different places. So fingers crossed if we get a good reply on that we'll be able to work together with these attractions and provide transportation to get those wonderful folk that's helped us at a time of need to get to uh, somewhere exciting for the day. The workout that in an average day there's about £10 million pounds worth of direct revenue spend from passengers to local communities. So working together uh, with the likes of Visit Scotland and, and the Tourism Alliance and, and the Ministers, we, we should be able to create a package that is able to help and support the coach industry, similar to what they've done for the bus industry. Uh, because without coaches coming in, the, the, the places like castles and 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 uh, hotels will will uh, suffer massively because the missing impact of the coach tourism industry to small communities all around the UK. So at this time, uh, we now have a fifth generation coming into the family business, and there's lots of coach companies up and down the country that uh, as a family business we wish well and hope to see once the pandemic ends that we come back stronger than we have ever been and we go forward to make sure that tourism continues to be part of the uh, important aspect. So the, the most important thing to say is that we wish everybody well Good, good health and fingers crossed when, when this is it, ends we can all uh, stand together and make sure that we, we are as one going forward, as one coach industry uh, supporting everybody and the thousands and thousands and thousands of passengers that rely heavily on the coach industry every day, every year. Thank you.